Robert Litvak is Vice President for Scholars and Director of International Security Studies at the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. He's also a consultant to the Los Alamos National Laboratory. Rob, welcome back to now. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Let me ask you about uh, the significance of Iran's missile test. What does this tell us about their capability and where they stand in the international order? Iran has been making determined, steady progress in developing a ballistic missile capability. That dates back to the Iran-Iraq war, where Iran was on the receiving end of ballistic missile attacks from Saddam Hussein's Iraq. Uh, lacking an air force, they've invested in ballistic missiles in partnership with uh, North Korea for technology transfers to, to develop these capabilities, but which also opens the door to the possibility that a miniaturized nuclear warhead could be fitted on it and uh, would be a game changer. Um, that issue was addressed during the Iran nuclear negotiations. The talks that constrained Iran's nuclear uh, weapons program or, or um, its nuclear infrastructure, constraints were imposed on its nuclear infrastructure to prevent it from becoming a nuclear weapons program. But linking it to the ballistic missile piece was a bridge too far diplomatically for the United States. They made a good determined effort to, to uh, uh, incorporate ballistic missiles into the talk, but they were not able, it was a diplomatic bridge too far. So what we were left with was a Security Council um, resolution, which was horatory. I mean, it, it exalted Iran to not engage in ballistic missile tests, uh, but without being definitive in proscribing them. Um, the, the language refers to ballistic missile tests that could have potential nuclear applications. Iran is saying, that they have given up their nuclear weapons program under the deal. Therefore, by definition, this ballistic missile test does not have nuclear implications. But that's been the crux of the dispute between the United States and, and uh, Iran over this test. But at least technically speaking, then, Iran is not in violation of the agreement with this missile test. The, if uh, technically not in violation, but uh, there would they would be that would be challenged because of Iran's past cheating on its nuclear mm -hmm. weapons program. Uh, administration officials would say that that the test was not consistent with the obli its obligations under the Security Council resolution. But I doubt that other countries would see it that way. So the Trump administration uh, already has come to the table with new sanctions. Mm -hmm. uh, how do these sanctions relate to the nuclear deal? Are we limited in the types of sanctions that can be imposed based on the deal? Based on the deal, the, the deal uh, is narrow. It was circumscribed to encompass just the nuclear issue. So U.S. has a host of sanctions imposed on Iran for support of terrorism, human rights abuses, nuclear. Um, the uh, nuclear-related san sanctions uh, were um, lifted or will be lifted in, in, in sequence through the, through the nuclear deal. But the Sanctions relating to ballistic missiles remain in place because they were not part of the deal. And these latest, uh, this latest uh, uh, announcement of sanctions essentially tightens those by naming different entities in Iran and I believe China that were involved in, in uh, providing technology or, or uh, being conduits for missile-related technology reaching ir Iran. So those entities were sanctioned by the U.S. government. Um, but they were limited and circumscribed. A lot has been made of the, the use of the term uh, on notice, Iran being on notice. And President Trump then in a subsequent uh, tweet uh, today said Iran's playing with fire. I, I know that language matters in international mm -hmm. relations and in life. Wh what is your analysis of, of what's being said? Uh, the message is unclear. I mean, on notice um, is devoid of any concrete specified consequences that would uh, flow from for example, an, an additional ballistic missile test. Um, uh, dare one say red line. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, the language is important. Um, uh, um, the National Security Advisor, Michael Flynn himself, walked back, uh, well, the, the, the debate over the uh, on notice uh, comment uh, saying, uh, I believe that uh, uh, no specific re retaliatory you know, action, whether diplomatic or military, was implied. Uh, or, or um, in, encapsulated in that in that formulation, so it's not clear. Would it be a, a, a stretch or, or 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 perhaps accurate to to guess that Iran may be testing the new administration? Testing. I mean, it's 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 uh, um, a, you know, President Trump has is 
been widely it's been widely commented in a in a host of spheres that he has been a disruptor. You know, uh, that's the word I guess taken from from business. I mean, he's cha he's challenging old assumptions, and in that respect, it's less predictable for the Iranians. But I would say what's playing out here, if I had to kind of broaden the optic, and um, uh, make a, a broader contextual comment that I think sort of is indicative of the work being done at the Wilson Center, is that the nuclear issue remains a proxy for a more fundamental debate in Iran and in the United States. In Iran, it's a stand-in for their unresolved identity crisis, whether they're a revolutionary state or an ordinary country. In America, whether Iran, we should deal with a regime by, like Iran by either changing its behavior or by changing the regime itself. That's the dynamic. And that hasn't changed. That structure the of the debate has not changed. No. And what we see is the nuclear, the, the missile test is sort of playing into that. In the Iranian context, and I've talked to some of our colleagues who work, um, who follow Iran's domestic scene, um, there's speculation that the Revolutionary Guards that have oversight of the, mil of the, mil the missile program may have felt this was a good, uh, a useful um, ep occasion to signal to the, its own resolve to the, to the uh, Bush, uh, Trump administration and also to signal to domestic constituencies that anti-Americanism remains a tenet of Iran's unresolved identity crisis. On the American side, as soon as this episode happens, then our own debate kicks in on you know, regime change versus behavior change. And the unsatisfactory quality of the Iran nuclear deal to many, it's, 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 it, it just addressed the nuclear issue. So it was transactional. It didn't affect other areas of Iranian behavior, its support for terrorism, its involvement in Lebanon or, 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 or um, Yemen, um, its provocative actions in the region. Um, and the fact that the nuclear deal was discreet in that respect um, has been a source of opposition for those who view that the source of the Iranian threat is not its capabilities, but the character of its regime. Mm. And that's why as we look at the missile test or what will follow from that, I would tell the kind of the viewers of now that bear in mind the structure of the debate, the unresolved identity crisis in Iran and our own unresolved, uh, the, the unresolved tension in the U.S. debate over what our objective in dealing with Iran should be. One final uh, technical question about the deal. Uh, are there any markers coming up or, or inspections or anything that we can look to to see how, how this is going? It's an ongoing process and there's been kind of continuous um, uh, monitoring, some of it's done through, through technology on site. Um, the Iranians are sort of operating within the four corners of the agreement. They've not done anything that would be an explicit violation. They've been abiding by it. But what one's seeing is that they're pushing the envelope. If there's an, any area of ambiguity that they can, ex they can exploit, I think one can count on them to exploit it. The ballistic missile language in the Security Council resolution, because it was uh, oratory, not um, uh, specific in proscribing activities, is ripe for the Iranians to test, the, to, to push the envelope and see. It's a ballistic missile test. They can claim, and there was speculation, was it a failed satellite launch? Um, doesn't seem to have been uh, geared for uh, uh, the multi-stage uh, ballistic missile one would need to, 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 achieve, to achieve low Earth orbit. But there are um, avenues for Iran to test the, param the, 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 the parameters of the agreement, both with respect to the nuclear deal itself, um, though there, are, there is a process within the deal to adjudicate any kind of challenges that the West might have about Iranian compliance. But outside the deal, and the, and the, the missile piece is, is a case in point, of a, 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 an important issue to the United States, which is beyond the scope of the agreement. I think one, there the Iranians are less constrained. And I think we, one will have to address those challenges in their own terms. And I would, I would recommend not linking them to the Iran nuclear deal and um, uh, avoiding that agreement because of some area that's outside the four corners of the nuclear um, arrangement. Work on a separate agreement beyond, beyond yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's discreet in that respect. And, and there's, it could, by constraining the Iran program for a fixed period of time um, in terms of their, their techno technology, uh, but for a longer period of time in terms of uh, Iranian um, 
the, the re-articulation of their obligations of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty to forego nuclear weapons. There are, there are agreements that go beyond, uh, there, there are commitments that go beyond the time frame of this agreement. Well, Rob, as, as always, educational. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing your insights with us. Thanks, John.